uh, everyone, it is my privilege and pleasure to introduce our first chief guest for today, Mr. Michael Jonganil, Global CEO of FMO. As many of you may be aware, FMO is a Dutch development bank structured as a bilateral private sector international finance institution based in the Hague, Netherlands. FMO invests in over 85 countries, supporting jobs and income generation in order to improve people's lives. Uh, Michael joined FMO in September 21 from international consulting firm Bain & Company, where he was a partner in the Amsterdam office, as well as the firm's global lead for sustainable finance. In this capacity, Michael helped to transform banks and insurers towards inclusion of sustainability in their core businesses and to develop impact investing strategies and innovative solutions in sustainable finance. Prior to Bain, Michael spent eight years at Triodos Bank, where he was the managing director of Triodos Investment Management PV. Welcome, uh, Michael, to Prabhav, and we look forward to hearing from you. Good morning again, namaste. Thank you for having me. Um, so yes, I'm uh, privileged to be the CEO of uh, FMO uh, since uh, a year now. But I'm for today, most of all, I'm very happy to be back in India. So it took me 21 years to, be, to come back. So I was here in February 2001, visiting the Maha Maha Kumbh Mela. Um, and it was for me, 65 million people together. So I come from a country which has 17 million people. So four times the whole country in one event was for me just flabbergasting. And India in, in general is for me flabbergasting. So very happy to be, uh, to be back uh, here. And thank you for organizing this event. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening, or in any case, pretending to listen to me. And I hope I can share some, um, well, inspiring things for you and wishing you an inspiring event in any case. So I'm going to talk about you three things. First of all, leadership. Two, a little bit about FMO. I mean, it's a bit of a commercial. And three, about India. I'm not sure if I can tell you anything new about India, but let's see. So let's start with leadership. Um, so some of you are, I think most of you are old enough to remember Stephen Covey in last century introducing the win-win principle. Uh, you make a deal, you have one party, a second party, and you make a win-win. Because if one of the two loses, it's not a good deal. So his philosophy might seem right, but I fairly, I really, really disagree with it. The win-win is dead, in my opinion. You might think, why? Because one of the biggest illustrations of it was the financial crisis that started in 2008 and lasted quite long, where you see a lot of deals, where there was one dealer and another dealer, they make a transaction, it was a fantastic transaction for both of them, but it had detrimental effects on the rest of the world. And why? Because they were focused on the win-win. Both of them had fantastic wins in it. They made a lot of money, but they forgot there's more. And now the speech also here says it's beyond the win-win because in these days, people and luckily many of you start realizing it's about the win-win-win. And there are three, uh, there are more levels of these win-win-wins, but in the end, it's about all the stakeholders. So on a personal level, there's a win. If I'm in a transaction, it needs to be good for me because otherwise I'll be broke. It's going to be good for my organization, FMO, but it needs to be good for all the stakeholders that are involved in the end as well. Because we're ruining the world if we focus on the win-win. We need to focus much more on the win-win-win. And the third win, where you take into account all stakeholders, is very difficult. It's super difficult. How do you know if the deal that you are creating, which are the secondary and tertiary effects of your deal, of your transaction, of the things that you are doing? How do you know? How do you know if the, the 
the food chain that you're optimizing will have a detrimental effect on somewhere else, a certain energy footprint, the climate footprint. Balancing these different elements is very difficult. But you are leaders. Everyone is leading his own life, so by definition you're a leader. But you're also typically leading an organization or a company, a team, a department. So you have the responsibility, think about it. Everybody in this room is fortunate enough to be in a position to have the responsibility to think about this win, win, win. And I'm not telling you that you should forget your own win, for sure. You do also should not forget the win for your own organization, your company, your department, it's very important. But you need to think through what the third win is and how it works. And you need to be your role model. So for me personally, I'm climate neutral. It took me a while to try to bring back my footprint. Of course, as a person, you can't. Um, so then in the end, I needed to compensate. If you want to know more, look at uh, one of my uh, posts on, uh, on LinkedIn where I go to bit, uh, in a bit more uh, depth uh, about uh, all of this. But it's for you to very much take care into account how do I create a win-win-win on a personal level and on the level of the organization that you're responsible for. How do you take into account societal effects, climate effects? We need to do that. So that was a little bit on... Um, on uh, leadership in general. So at FMO, we also strive for that win-win-win. And very shortly, a little bit more about FMO. Um, so we focus on three SDGs, they're on the top left here. And we do that with around 13 billion of a total portfolio. Um, back in the days, I need to explain where it's euros or, or dollars, but these days it's not necessary anymore because it's more or less the same thing. Um, and we do that in, in three sectors, as you can see on the right-hand side. So uh, we are one of the uh, DFIs, uh, Development Finance Institute, that really tries to focus, focus, because I believe we can have more impact if we focus on what we're really good at instead of doing kind of everything. So agri, wood and water, one hand energy, and, and financial institutions where it, where it basically all started. Um, you can see bottom right, uh, in Asia, we have about 3 billion in, um, um, and in the Eastern and Europe, Central Asia, another two, uh, two billion. So that's a large part of our portfolio um, uh, here. We do that in around 1,000 projects altogether. Um, those range from you know, the very big uh, typical uh, projects in, in energy and FI to smaller ventures. And we try to be really innovative. And you might have not heard about the Nazira um, instrument that we created. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty innovative financial program um, where we support via guarantees to portfolios of banks. We support youth, female migrant and COVID-19 affected entrepreneurs. So where the bank or the financial institution has a portfolio of these type of entrepreneurs, we expect them to take a small first loss, but we will guarantee all the other losses that are in the portfolio, which makes it attractive to move into this type of, uh, type of business. So, we really try to be a front runner on these type of um, innovative programs to make sure that we're not doing what everybody starts doing, but that we're really trying to show the, the way and lead uh, from the front in this, uh, in this particular situation. So back to that notion of win, win, win that I talked about you in the first part. Um, so for FMO, again, we take care in the first win of our shareholders and our employees because we need to ensure business continuity. If we would go do things at their cost, we would not exist anymore in a couple of years. So the first win, shareholders, employees. The second win is our customers, some of you. Um, extremely important. And the third, as I said, it's the broader society, it's climate, it's flora, it's fauna, it's basically everything else, also the future generations to the notion of what sustainability means. But it's very important to, for us to realize that we can't do anything to the th or the third win for climate and society without the second win, where it's our customers. So we really try to seek transaction deals with our customers that are very beneficial for us as FMO, for the customer, and again, third for society at large. Um, now I'm gonna share a little bit um, uh, on, the, on the next uh, page, um, a couple of our um, I think um, we need to go to the next slide. This is not the last version. These things happen, that's okay. 
can we? Yeah, thank you very much. So I'm going to focus on a, a couple of smaller ventures. Again, we have almost one billion in India, uh, so that can't be only in small ventures, of course, um, if you do the maths. So first of all, um, you see uh, Weku and, and the Hat. These are smaller ventures in agri agriculture technology. It's fantastic what, uh, what they do. They really try to optimize the whole food chain, taking out waste um, and thereby um, improving, of course, the yield for, um, uh, for the producers, the farmers. Uh, but they also make sure that uh, the prices for consumers can go down. And so there you go, you see also win-win. At the same time, they try to reduce food waste and they also, also try to reduce the climate footprint. And I think I'm, I'm very proud that we finance these type of entrepreneurs. Um, and the Haat, I think we finance together with Omnivor, um, one of our partners uh, here in the, in the audience, as you saw uh, this uh, already this morning. And we think it's a really a front running platform funding these type of entrepreneurs. And we will be looking forward to, to finance more of these type of entrepreneurs, just like Sadiadri, and I can't, sorry for the pronunciation, it's probably not good, but it's a pharma producing organization. And also there, the whole notion is 7,000 smallholder farms are uh, able to increase their productivity and income at a faster rate and pace than we see others do. And we're very happy that we can uh, support these because the benefit, the communities at large, uh, the society at large benefits from this while we're trying to support them in reducing the footprint. So also here again, you see on one hand, there's a societal benefit. On the other hand, we really need to take climate into account. And as of course, I don't have to tell you, as India is, as I'm told, the fifth uh, largest, um, uh, fifth country that has the largest impact from climate uh, change. So that little bit brings me to uh, to India, and I want to share a, a few statistics that might be um, not new to you. It was it was to me. So the first one is that India surpassed uh, China um, in the number of new unicorns. That's fantastic. Moving to the third place overall, and just a little bit after the US and China. But I understood another 19 unicorns were born this year, and I actually know we have at least one of them in our books. Now let's see if we can exit. Uh, that's of course always the exciting moment uh, with these unicorns, but, but let's see. Uh, we're in there for the long run, so we, we're not in a hurry, uh, but in the end, of course, we also need to kind of make our money in order to reinvest. So second is um, uh, interesting to see how huge the number of startups has, has grown to over, over 70,000 in uh, June of this, uh, this year. It's a huge market. Um, and also we saw that um, on, the, on the next bullet over 50% plus uh, of the demand for the first time in history is VC investments. Um, lastly, um, also the year on year growth is 3.8 times from, from 2021. So it's fantastic. But these are general stats. What I think is most important, this last one on this page, is um, that Indian impact investing has now impacted 200 million people. For me, 200 million is, is, is bizarre. Of course, for you, it's just one seventh of the country. So there's huge potential still to go. I mean, we have another 1.2 billion to go, but 200 million is fantastic. So for my point, from my point of view, India has huge potential. And I think that is fantastic. And we run our ventures program here with FMO, where we, as I said, support a lot of these startups and scale-ups, and we're just lo definitely looking to, uh, to, to do more of those. And I think we together can really uh, finance it, make it better, and then hopefully impact the other 1.2 billion people in your country. I a little bit mentioned the Nazira um, program. It's now focused in Africa, but we will most likely in the next year roll it out to, um, to Asia. So where we can again, hopefully finance together portfolio of young female entrepreneurs, migrants and COVID-19 affected entrepreneurs in a way that will sustain their, um, uh, their business. So I talked a little bit about you with leadership. I talked a little bit about uh, FMO. I talked a little bit about, uh, about India. And I think it slowly brings me to a closing. Clock tells me uh, that as well. And I will leave you with two messages and two questions. So first message, I hope you got that one. 
is think about this win, win, win in everything you do. And my question to you related to that message would be, ask yourself every day, every moment, where can I and where can my company be even more of a role model in thinking of and acting about this win, win, win? Everybody here is into impact investing, so you can easily think, ah, I'm already doing that. So, you know, that's okay. But you can do more. Everybody can do more, always. And I know that within FMO that I'm so ambitious, I've been told many times, but we're not here for our own benefit. We're here for that 1.4 billion people out there that need our help and our support. So what can you do even more in this win-win-win? My first message and my first question to you. The second one is, we're all here to make impact. FMO is here to make impact. So I want you to be assured that we are here to stay in India and to build our business even more with you. And that's my second question to you. Ask yourself, that's why we're here together. How can we together, you all together, but also together with FMO, make even more impact for that other 1.2 billion people? Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. This was truly, really, really inspiring. It was very heartening to hear about your views on the India opportunity. And I think thanks for emphasizing the third win. If all of us uh, take care of the third win, the world will be a much better place in the years to come.